Okay. If everybody would stand, we're going to post the callers. Everyone would join me in the pledge, please. <clears throat> pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, Lieutenant Mark Ashby will have the invocation. Let's pray. <clears throat> Lord, we uh, thank you for, uh, for this day, for, for Nick and Mitch, and thank you for what they've meant to our department over the year. And uh, we just uh, look forward to what they can be for the rest of their career. And uh, we'll pray for, pray for them and also their families as they're away from them. Pray that they'll uh, have a good and productive and healthy career in your name. Amen. 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 Okay, everybody may be seated. Thank you all for coming as we um, honor uh, Mitch and Nick today and their um, promotion from candidate firefighters to firefighters. Um, this is a, a really big deal. I mean, um, when we bring firefighters in, we tell them their candidacy is their last part of the testing process. So they go through the testing process, they get on the list, they're interviewed, they get hired, but the last section is that whole year of probation where they receive their training, they work through the different um, crews on each shift, and they have a candidate book they keep track of and we make sure that they're trained, they went through all the steps, they have all their certifications, and then at the end of the year um, we have a promotional ceremony where they're promoted from a candidate firefighter to a firefighter. So that's what we're doing today. Um, I thank um, family, friends, um, Mayor Marlin, all the um, firefighters for coming and joining in the celebration. Um, it's been a tradition for the last few years that um, when we do the promotion from candidate, we go over the history of the fire department. And I think uh, fire department service has kind of um, grown out of traditions. There's a lot of traditions that we still do, and traditions are good. And at the same time, we move forward and, and keep pace with um, modern technology. So I'm going to start from the first time the fire department was organized in Urbana and bring us to present. And this is a very quick synopsis of its history. Sometimes after 1855, the first group of volunteer firefighters in Urbana was known as the Badcock Boys which consisted of about 40 young men and boys organized into a bucket brigade. A large fire in Urbana in 1871 consumed 30 buildings and wiped out 49 businesses and resulted in $116,000 $116, worth of damage. The fire happened on the same day as the Chicago fire and the Peshtigo, Wisconsin fire. So that was a long dry summer and there were fires happening all across the country. From the ashes of the 1871 conflagration came the seeds of an organized fire department in Urbana. It began with the city purchasing its first fire apparatus in 1871, which consisted of a hose cart, hose, and a hand pump. It was followed by the third ordinance of 1874, which provided for the organization of fire companies and defined their duties. In 1875, Urbana voted to start installing water mains 
followed in 1880 with Mayor Colonel Busey recognizing that a regular force of firemen was needed under the city's control. Thus, in 1881, the Urbana Fire Department was born. The Urbana Fire Department has seen many changes throughout the years. In 1897, Urbana purchased its first horse-drawn fire apparatus and was pulled by a team of rented horses. In 1900, the first Sydney Ordinance of the Year set the salary for the fire chief and the firefighters. Then in 1902, funds were raised for Urbana to purchase three teams of horses and two more fire wagons. As the department moved forward in 1913, it purchased Champaign County's first motor-driven fire engine. By 1947, Urbana owned two engines, a ladder truck, and today the Urbana Fire Department responds to emergencies with a fleet of four frontline engines, a 100-foot ladder truck, and a dedicated staff car, and four additional staff cars. Uh, we have three engines, a special operations tow vehicle, six specialty trailers, and an ATV. So the fleet of vehicles and the number of firefighters has greatly expanded. From 1915 until 1930, Urbana was a full-time paid department with seven firefighters who worked six 24-hour shifts in a row followed by one day off. The firemen were able to go home for lunch and dinner every day. From 1930 until 1958, Urbana was a two-platoon fire department with firefighters working a 24-hour shift followed by 24 hours off duty. The department moved to the current 24 hours on duty and 48 hours off duty in 1958 and that continues today. Through the years, the department has been located at three different addresses. Originally at 105 North Broadway, then in 1908 it moved to the 100 block of West Elm Street, that's where the city parking garage is now. And in 1964, after 56 years on Elm Street, the department moved to its current location at 400 South Vine, and which later became the city complex. The fire station preceded the city complex. In 1968, the department grew by adding the Philo Road substation, soon followed in 1971 with the addition of the North Lincoln Station. The opening of each substation added nine additional firefighters. The department's size remained the same for the next 27 years. In 1998, the University of Illinois' decision to disband its 100-year-old fire department resulted in a contract with the city of Urbana to staff the university's fire station and provide fire protection to the campus community. Urbana absorbed nine university firefighters and hired six additional firefighters to provide the fire protection. Services were delivered from the old U of I fire station at 1308 West Green Street using the former <coughs> U of I fire apparatus initially. Fire service continues to be um, provided to the university today. However, the new university fire station is located at 1107 West Gregory. And in 2002, Urbana purchased an engine for that station, so it replaced the U of I engine. Um, through the years, many traditions have stayed the same, such as Urbana Red Fire Apparatus and Federal Q Sirens. But traditions take second place as the department continues to be a leader in the fire service by providing high quality, cutting edge services. Included in these services are company level commercial and multifamily inspections, pre plans, home, liar, home fire life safety surveys, and smoke detector replacement citywide every year comprehensive education programs in the schools and throughout the community, advanced level medical care to our citizens through an EMTI program, technician level rescue and hazardous materials mitigation, and at the Urbana Fire Department, we've always had a can-do attitude and service to our community. I mean, if there's a need, we step up. And that's what being an Urbana firefighter is all about. It's what we expect from our employees, and it's what we look for in the candidates we hire. We always strive to continue the tradition of quality service into our community. So, Mitch and Nick, that's what we expect of you as a firefighter, and welcome aboard. Okay, first off, i um, like Mitch Rolson to step up front here. Um, Division Chief Derek Odell is going to make some remarks. Thank you. 
I had a PowerPoint presentation planned, but Mitch kind of talked me out of that. I'll show him the pictures later. So I'll, uh, I'll start with our, my remarks. It's truly my honor to speak on behalf of Mitch. The Rolsons have been a family friend of mine for several years. I want to welcome his parents, Jim, Angie, his sister, Tori, and his long, long, long time <laughs> girlfriend, Emily. I'm glad she's here. <laughs> About 11 years to be exact. We want to thank you for raising and sharing uh, a kind, caring, hardworking, dedicated young man. When Mitch was first hired, I put a post on social media congratulating him on getting hired and achieving his goal of becoming a career fireman. Angie immediately posted under it, take care of my kid. I want you to know that I haven't forgot that. Uh, for as long as I can remember, Mitch has wanted to be a career fireman, and I wanted to be a fireman in Urbana. Mitch has been dedicated to the fire service. He served in the volunteer firefighter capacity for 10 years prior to getting hired in Urbana. He was a firefighter for four years and appointed lieutenant for the last six. He served on the Mavis dive team as a rescue diver for the last 10 years. I don't know if this is good or bad luck, but if a diver was ever on the news, either pulling out cars, looking for evidence, or removing victims, nine times out of 10, it was Mitch. To tell you how bad Mitch wanted to be a career fireman, he put himself through IFSI Academy twice. He took off work, went unpaid for six weeks, and had to pay for the class on his own. He first went through in 2010 and became a certified firefighter too. In 2016, he found out that he was fifth on our eligibility list in Urbana. He knew that we required academy training uh, in the last three years. In order to improve his chances to getting hired, he did it all over again. To me, this shows dedication and commitment to our profession. Mitch, during your probation year, you have been an exceptional probationary employee. You're always doing it the right way. Studying, learning your streets, completing your manual, and wanting to learn your van away. I'm always excited when firefighters get hired and have a passion, respect, and dedication to this job. And beyond, it's such an honor for me to have someone that I've known personally and now professionally, that I have such confidence, confidence in as a member of this department for our future. We will continue to support you for your career for at least the next, I don't know, 30 or 40 years. <laughs> and just really appreciate your hard work. So welcome to the Brotherhood. Thanks, sir. Okay. Do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the duties of the position of firefighter. Do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the duties of the position of firefighter. For the city of Urbana in the county of Champaign, Illinois. For the city of Urbana in the county of Champaign, Illinois. And will to the best of my ability preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution and laws of the United States. And will to the best of my ability preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution and laws of the United States. The State of Illinois. The State of Illinois. And the Charter and Ordinances of the City of Urbana. And the Charter and Ordinances of the City of Urbana. Acting rightfully for the citizens of Urbana, so help me God. Acting rightfully for the citizens of Urbana, so help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Nick up. It's 
not a bad sign, Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Division Chief Chad Hench is going to make some remarks um, for Nick. We're going to start. You ready to take your quiz? <laughs> ready as we're going to be. Okay. Roy, Tal. <laughs> I'm kidding that we have a, a joke in on so this is not happening? <laughs> Do you really want to take it? I got no. three questions. <laughs> okay. Okay. First of all, thank you all for coming uh, to be here with, with Nick. I was asked to get up and speak today on his behalf. And uh, we're gonna take a little bit different approach than what First Chef does. Uh, we're going to do a little bit more lighthearted. Uh, our shift is more uh, uh, fun, I'll put it that way. <laughs> and so uh, we're going to live in the moment here and enjoy that. Um, on your behalf, Nick, I called around because I don't get to work with them all the time. My job is to run the shift. So I don't get to sit with him like on a daily basis to kind of find his little nuances and stuff. So I pulled the shift the other, yesterday. And I got some facts, and I says, can you give me some dirt on Nick? What can I share with them? <laughs> well, they really didn't have a lot. In fact, I wrote everything down in this little piece of paper here. And uh, their comments were, he's very quiet, he uses creamer in his coffee, and he sleeps with stuffed animals. Uh, <laughs> other than that, they didn't really have a lot to say about you. <laughs> so uh, at any rate, uh, Nick's a quiet guy in a, in a environment that's loaded full of uh, class A type personalities on there, he kind of stands out a little bit. But I think that's good. He's got a good heart. And uh, so I did get some stories to share with you on his behalf. There's three of them that I'm going to share with you. And I hope these are all not incriminating on you. Uh, they fit into three categories. One station life, the other one's on a response that he was on, and then the third one here was fitting in to our department. Uh, the first one is uh, about this Yeti coffee cup. <laughs> All right. Uh, so apparently, Lieutenant Myers gave him a, a Yeti uh, coffee cup uh, that he could have and use. But in typical Nick fashion, he can't seem to remember where he puts things. So just like the word Yeti or Sasquatch or whatever, this mythical creature that we can't find, that kind of is mysterious and disappears, his coffee cup can never be found in the same place. And it keeps reappearing. People will see it for a few seconds and then it disappears again. And they said, Nick's easy to find. Of course, according to the guys at Station One, he's easy to spot. So they said, you just walk around and look for the mess of the stuff laying out on the table and it's not too far away. So uh, I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, um, uh, the Yeti thing is still, and you still haven't got the coffee cup back yet, no, right? it's still been stolen. It's still been stolen? Yeah. Is that what you're going with? It's stolen. Okay. Uh, so that was our station life. Our second uh, thing we're talk about is a response. And again, I don't go with him on these calls, so I don't know. I'm only going off of what Gene and Roy and your buddies tell me here. But uh, apparently Nick went on 251 for a smoke detector that was sounding at an apartment complex and the occupant had left and they locked their door and we did not have keys to get into the apartment to kind of figure out what was going on with the smoke detector. So they did their size up and they discovered a window on the second floor that was open where this apartment was at. So they pulled off a ladder, threw it to the second floor, told Nick to go up there and go through the window and let the rest of the company in so we can figure out what was going on with the smoke detector. So he did that. It was dark, so they turned on the lights. They entered to the apartment after he unlocked the door, found the detector, wasn't nothing. They got it to reset, hung it back up. And they said, well, we don't have keys to lock the apartment back up for the occupant, so we're just gonna leave the same way that we left. So they did. Uh, Nick locked them back out, went back out through the window, went down the ladder, put the ladder away, and they were getting ready to leave, and they looked back up at the apartment and the lights were still on. <laughs> so out comes the ladder again, <laughs> up he goes, through the window, turns off the lights, back out the window, back down the ladder, put the ladder back on the truck, and they get ready to leave. According to the guys, they say the lights are always on, but no one's really home. 
that's truth on that. The, uh, the third thing is uh, fitting into our station. And this just happened yesterday at lunchtime when I was thinking of things to share about Nick. Um, so I walk in and he's sitting there on the magic box looking at something to order. And, and uh, magic boxes, those cell phones that connect to the internet. That's my term for it. So he's on the magic box and he says, you want anything from Jimmy John's? And it's like, ah, no thanks. And we were talking and, and I, I said, do you ever use Grubhub? And he says, what's Grubhub? And I said, well, it's a delivery service. So you call them up and you pick out what you want and they'll bring it to you. And he kind of looked at me like, ah, well, you know, just one of them looks of like, you know, he's pulling my leg or I don't believe him, whatever. So we don't really say nothing else and in walks Famy. So he asked Famy, he says, Famy, you use Grubhub in a typical Famy fashion. She says, yes, I do. She says, the best thing ever. My time's precious. Why do I want to waste my time driving around getting a sandwich? <coughs> so the next thing you know, Nick fires up his phone and he's looking at the magic box and he's ordering and he's looking, man, they got all this neat stuff and he's talking. And uh, so he says, you want anything? And I said, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and join the club. He picked out meatheads. We, uh, I got a hamburger. He got a hamburger, whatever. We were going to have it delivered. I tossed some six bucks for the hamburger and uh, later on it shows up about a half hour later. Kind of all how this ties in station life is is that Nick's always being picked on uh, by his guys. I shouldn't say picked on, he's being, he's the brunt of the joke maybe on that regards. So I walk in and he hands me the hamburger in my office and I'm talking to the chief and so I wasn't in there when he ate his so I walk in there and everybody's sitting around the kitchen table for for lunch, just chewing the fat. And I walk in there and I look at Nick and said, how was your hamburger? He said, oh man, it's great. And I says, yeah, I said, Nick bought mine for uh, helping him off uh, probation, you know? And, and uh, so of course that started the, oh, suck butt, blah, 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 and, you know, for everybody else. So taking a little story and stretching it to a bigger story, next time make up something like, you know, I just want to show my appreciation for helping me off probation and you know getting me through my year to stretch a little bit more but he got them all that's the joke part <laughs> so uh, Nick's a really good really good guy he's a hard worker he's got a good heart he's honest he's quiet does everything that he's told to do um, we're very very happy and excited that he's a member of our shift I wanted to give you uh, three words of, uh, or quotes that stole off the internet that I would like to share with you. Not that they mean a lot to the fire service, but I just think it kind of gives us a little bit of uh, teeth to what you're going to be enduring here the next 25, 30, or in Mitch's case, 40 years of being here. <laughs> Words of wisdom, don't ever wrestle with a pig. You'll both get dirty, but the pig will enjoy it. That came from Carol Yarborough, one of my favorite NASCAR drivers back in the day. Uh, this one comes from uh, Dr. Martin Luther King. Change does not roll on the wheels of inevitability, but comes through the continuous struggle. And so we must straighten our backs, because a man can't ride you unless your back is bent. So stand up tall, and uh, nobody's going to jump on your back. Last one here is uh, from Albert Einstein. In the middle of difficulty lies opportunity. So we're all about continuous success. We're all about learning from our mistakes. We're all about moving forward and that can-do attitude that the chief was talking about. It's my <coughs> honor to have you on shift two. Thank you. I'm Nick Jarvis. I, Nick Jarvis. Do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the duties of the position of firefighter for the city of Urbana. Do solemnly swear I will faithfully execute the duties of the position of firefighter for the city of Urbana. In the county of Champaign, Illinois. In the county of Champaign, Illinois. And will to the best of my ability. 
And will to the best of my ability. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution and laws of the United States. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution and laws of the United States. The State of Illinois. The State of Illinois. And the Charter and Ordinances of the City of Urbana. And the Charter and Ordinances of the City of Urbana. Acting rightfully for the citizens of Urbana, so help me God. Acting rightfully for the cities of Urbana. Citizens of Urbana, so help me God. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Hey, we also have a tradition that um, after the firefighter candidates get promoted to firefighters, we form a receiving line uh, of all the firefighters here and in order of rank and seniority. So let's go ahead and set that line. Thank you. Thank you.